In our last two videos, we were looking at financial ratios. So we've been going through a list, and here's a list of some of them here, and we're looking at what do they tell us about the organization, how well we are using our money, our assets, uh, in order to fund our operations, turn that into profits, and pay off our debts, and get a return on investment for our um, stockholders. So let's wrap up this little discussion here by looking at which of these ratios give us what type of information. And so we have this interpretation here. And we have five questions. So let's take a look at the ratios that we've just gone through in the last two videos to say, okay, well, which ones tell us if our profits are satisfactory? Which ones tell us if the assets we have are really generating revenue and turning into profit? Which ones tell us if our business can pay its debts? Which ones tell us if we have a good mix of assets? So how good are the assets we have? If we have too much inventory, how do we do in terms of working capital? Uh, what if all of our assets are tied up into accounts receivable? Uh, people owe us and we haven't got paid. So how good are the business assets? And then the last one we're gonna look at is, is the equity in the business satisfactory? So if we have investors, people who have purchased our stocks, uh, is that what we need for the organization? So let's go back to the different um, financial ratios that we looked at before and just simply look at which ones answer each of these questions. And so the first one is, are profit satisfactory? So let's just go and look at here um, the different ratios that we have. And when we look at our profit satisfactory, so I'm just going to, um, let's put it as a one. So we have net profit to owner's equity, which tells us the return on investment uh, for those stockholders. And so are the profit satisfactory here from the perspective of those who are buying our stock? Do people want to invest in our organization because it's getting a return? So that first one is definitely telling us about uh, profit. We can also look at net profit to sales. So those first two are took looking at profit and the net profit to sales is really that fundamental ratio that looks at profitability. Are we, when we sell the particular goods that we are, uh, that we're producing, the services we're providing, that revenue that's coming in, do we get to keep that revenue? Does it turn into profit or is all the money that's coming into the organization going to expenses? And so net profit to net sales really is looking at profitability. And we talked in a previous video about how when we look at that net profit to net sales, if it's below 5%, that's considered quite low. 20% uh, range is quite high. We did look in previous videos at some of the tech center uh, service industries might have more um, of a higher profit margin. And so their net profit to net sales will be higher. Um, some of the manufacturing with low profit margins have a lot of expenses, that profit margin might be lower. So you do have to look at industry specific, but just in a very general, you know, a net profit to net sales about 10% is considered to be adequate. All right, so then let's go to the second question here, which is are assets productive? So when we think about our assets, and of course, when we talk about assets, let's go back and remind ourselves, assets include cash, include accounts receivable, so people owe us money, we sold them a good, and we're waiting for them to pay us. It includes our inventory. It includes our fixed assets. And we talk about fixed assets. Remember, our fixed assets are our property, our plant, our equipment. All right, so let's go back to the question, which is, are the assets productive? And so as we look at our ratios, call this question two here, we're looking for the ratios that tell us about how effective we are at using our assets. And so, for example, this net sales to fixed assets is telling us exactly how effective are we using our equipment to generate sales. And we're looking for that net sales to fix assets above two, okay? We can then get into more specific assets. Uh, we can look, for example, at inventory and how well we're using our inventory. And so you can see here we have our net sales to inventory. Let's put up two here, okay? 
and we have our inventory turnover rate. Those are telling us about how well we are utilizing that inventory to generate uh, revenue. Okay. All right. And let's look at what else we have here. We can also look at net sales to working capital uh, to tell us about how well we're using our assets. So again, working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. So when we look at our net sales to working capital, the, the funds, the cash that we're using um, to generate profit, right? The, those assets that we have should be growing with the revenue which is growing with the profit. And so we are effectively using our assets if those assets turn into revenue and those revenue turns into profits, which is what you have here. So when we look at net sales to working capital, remember we talked about um, a 1.5 to two, if it's less than one, you're gonna have future liquidity problems. So you're not gonna have the assets you need to fund the future operations if that number's too low, okay? All right, what else do we got? Well, let's go back to our questions. Can the business pay its debts? So remember, debts are liabilities. And so let's look at what ratios we have related to liabilities. We are on number three. So when we talk about being able to pay debts, uh, we often think about the current ratio, the acid test, right, that are comparing those assets to liabilities. So when we look at the current ratio, it's our ability to pay short-term debts. Do we have that necessary liquidity? And then we look at the asset test. Remember, we take out the inventory out of that current ratio, um, so a more conservative measure. And so with the asset test, we're looking for a number more than one. Uh, for the current ratio, 1.2 to 1.8, or around two. If it's less than one, you can't pay your debts. If it's more than two, then we have a bunch of idle funds that we're not utilizing. Okay. Um, long-term liabilities to working capital. So this one here is focusing on the long-term. And so when we look at our long-term liabilities, we looked at, as we said before, right, I'll just scroll here. So if we're looking at a point less than a 0.5, then we have too much short-term debt. And if we have more than two, we have too much long-term debt. And so here, this one is looking at the really that balance of long-term and short-term debt as we try to answer that question about can we pay our debts? So we have to consider, right, what can we do in the short-term versus the long-term. The other one that we have related to can our business pay our debts that we don't see on that financial ratio sheet, but we talked about in a previous video, is the interest coverage ratio. So the interest coverage ratio looks at your earnings before interest and taxes, also called your operating profit, and then it takes that number and divides by the interest on the outstanding debts. The question is, is can we afford to pay the interest we owe on the debt? and your interest coverage ratio should be more than three. If it's less than one, you don't have enough money coming in uh, to even pay the interest now, and we want a bit of a buffer. We want some stable revenue flow, um, so we want to be able to cover essentially three times the amount of interest, which is why we're looking for an interest coverage ratio above three. So that's another one we could look at um, to make sure that we can pay our debts. Now. If we look at the Industry Canada data, I'm actually just going to find the ones that are motor vehicles, okay? And you can see here on the bottom, it reports the interest coverage ratio at 4.7. So when it comes to um, Ford and GM companies producing motor vehicles, you can see they can pay the interest on their debts 4.7 times. So doing well there. And let's look at the hotel industry. Notice this interest coverage ratio of 0.9, less than one, which means they cannot pay the interest on their debts. And so as we were looking at the hotel industry in 2021, having issues because again, 
they are not making profit that year, revenue is down, not sufficient sales, lots of liabilities, and so there's a particular warning that they can't pay their debts when we look at that interest coverage ratio. If you are looking at um, our problem sets in the course, right? So here's the food service industry and um, see if that one is here. Interest coverage ratio for them uh, for food service 4.4 and for non-store retail. Um, so that would be like Amazon is one of the companies that fall into this industry. You can see that interest coverage ratio at 22.5. They can cover their interest on their debts 22 and a half times. So not a problem there in terms of paying off um, their, their debts. All right, so let's go back to our questions. We looked at our profit satisfactory. We looked at our assets productive. We looked at can the business pay its debt. So really we looked at, if I'm working through these, one, two, and three here. So let's look at number four. How good are the business assets? So if we look at the combination that they have of inventory, fixed assets, cash, accounts receivable, uh, how are we doing? So let's go back to our ratios and we're gonna label these four, okay? And so as we look at these, we can see, for example, receivables to working capital would tell us about whether or not we have uh, too many in terms of accounts receivable, right? That's people who owe us, and we're concerned that our capital is tied up if people haven't paid us. So the higher the receivables to working capital, the more the money is tied up in people we're waiting for their payments. Maybe it's a lot of credit-based sales. And so we don't have that money on hand to fund our day-to-day -day operations. So we're looking for a lower number, 0.5 or lower. Um, again, if you have longer payment cycles in your industry, more credit-based sales, that number is going to be higher. But we're looking for a lower number, which means that we have less accounts receivable tying up our assets that we need for our operations. Okay, all right, what else would fall into that same category? Well, we have our inventory to working capital. So when we look at our inventory to working capital, if that number is too high, we have too much inventory. So think about your company producing a lot of product that is really just not going out the door. Um, we're investing a lot of time in production and we've produced way too much. Then that means that yes, we have assets, um, but they're the not the right assets that we need. We're, all of that inventory is just sitting there, it's depreciating, it's becoming obsolete, uh, it's not turning into revenue. So you, you wanna have enough inventory that when customers are looking for it, it's there, because you don't want an angry customer who sees empty shelves, but at the same time, you don't want too much inventory that's just sitting there losing value. So we wanna be liquid, so we wanna have, um, just the right inventory we need. We don't wanna to have too much, uh, too many of our assets tied up into inventory. So that's what we're looking at there. Inventory to working capital. Range depends on the type of industry you have in terms of what type of inventory you have. All right, what else do we have here? Um, collection period. So our collection period is gonna to tie to those accounts receivable. How long does it take for people to pay us? The longer the collection period, the more our assets are tied up into things that are not gonna be able to use for our day-to-day -day operations. So a lower collection period is a better balance of assets uh, in terms of funding those operations. We don't want all of our assets to be people owe us money and they haven't paid yet, okay? All right, what else do we have that fits into this category? I think that's about it for the balance of assets. All right, so then what we have left here is, is the equity in the business satisfactory. So then we're looking at the ratios that tell us about equity versus debt. Do we have the right balance in terms of the amount of equity versus the amount of debt? So let's go back to our here. 
And so really we're focusing on a lot of these last couple ratios, but before we do that, let's just also look at the net profit to owner's equity up here at the top. We talked about how that tells us about how profitable the organization is, and it's profitable from the perspective of the stockholder. And so if we're looking at, do we have the right balance of that equity and liability? Are we actually encouraging investment into our organization? That net profit to owner's equity will determine whether other people will buy our stock in the future. Are we getting them a return on the investment? So then what we also look at is these last ones here. So debt to owner's equity and our fixed assets. Let's make sure I have this right here. Debt to owners, fixed assets. The current liabilities to owner's equity um, we could categorize maybe into category this category three and can the business pay its debts? Because you're looking at the ability to meet the short-term debt uh, with the equity. Uh, so you could kind of classify it here into the can the business pay its debts? Uh, so we might label that one. If I go back, whoop, let's try that again. Let's go back. We might put a kind of a three label on this one here um, in terms of that can we pay the debt? Right, we talked about the current liability, that's the ability to meet the short-term debt. If it's lower, you're less likely to default. So let's look at the other two here, debt to owner's equity and fixed assets to owner's equity, telling us about the appropriate amount of equity. So debt to owner's equity is really the key ratio here, which is, are you financing your company with debt or do you have investors buying stock? And so we talked before about it being one to 1.5. We slightly prefer more debt funding uh, than equity from a sense of control uh, from the business from management. If it's a more capital intensive um, organization, so you're more finance, you're more manufacturing, that number is gonna be higher two to 2.5 uh, because you're gonna have more equipment and infrastructure that is gonna require some additional debt. So we'll go a bit higher. So here we're looking at that balance between equity um, and liabilities. Then the other one is that fixed assets to owner's equity. And we talked before about how is your equipment being funded? If you're trying to entice investors, um, then they want more of that financing of the fixed assets to be with the stockholders. So more equity based, which means your number is going to be um, less than one. If it is greater than one, then it's gonna be more finance with debt. And then of course the concern from the stockholders is if something happens and you sell off that fixed asset, all of that value goes to the people you borrowed money from and not to the investors. So the the blend of equity and um, and and debt, uh, we talked about in a previous video. So you can see that one in more detail uh, in that previous video in terms of how do you decide uh, where to get funding for your organization. So what we've done is we've looked at these financial ratios and we've determined um, are the profits satisfactory? So we've looked at ratios and kind of where we want those numbers to be. We've looked at our assets productive. Do they turn into sales? Does that turn into profit? We've looked at can the business pay its debts long and short term? We've looked at the mix of assets and we've looked at, in terms of funding the organization, we've looked at that combination of debt and equity. So you should be able to look at some financial ratios from an organization and answer these questions based on pulling the right financial ratios to give you the information about profits, about assets being productive, about the combination of assets, uh, liabilities, and equity.